Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I have another hair tutorial and I just wanna go ahead and say before we get started, this was actually filmed in January or February of this year. So this was pre-COVID, not post-COVID, so don't worry, we are definitely wearing masks nowadays, but when this video was filmed, we obviously were not aware of COVID, so we were not wearing a mask. So before anybody gets on me, I just wanted to make that little PSA. But anyways, in today's video, we have a very kind of complicated situation in our hands because blondes are already super complicated as is, but we have a couple of different colors in here, different shades of blonde, I guess you can call it. So we have a little bit of a yellowy blonde up near the front where the root is, and then we also have more of a purple silvery where it was a little bit overtoned and you can tell it was a little bit more porous. So it grabbed onto the purple shampoo. And then as we move our way down to the ends of the hair, you can see where the color is a little bit faded out uh, and not as blonde. So it is quite a bit brassy down there. Uh, so we just have a lot of different shades of blonde to kind of blend in together. And our goal today is just to make it one solid bright platinum blonde color. She really likes the icy cool tones. So I am super excited to show you guys how I achieve this look and how I get her to a nice even icy platinum blonde. So if you guys are interested on in seeing that, then let's just go ahead and get started in today's video. All right, so for my lightener of choice, I am of course using the Schwarzkopf Igora Vario Blonde Plus. You guys know that if you've watched my videos before, I always use this lightener. I absolutely love it. I feel like it has the best lift, um, but it isn't as quick as the Blonde Me. So I like that whenever I'm doing a big transformation like this, just to make sure that there's no over-processing, especially since I take so much time to do these types of colors. So I'm just starting off with 10 volume and then using 1 4th Olaplex as well, because we have to protect the hair, especially during big transformations. For full foils, I like to start in the back of the head just in case you need to rinse out any product if it's processing too quickly for you. So as you can see here, I'm doing a headband section so I can clip those two forward sections out of my way and really focus on the back. I always like to start by doing a really detailed hairline. So with that, I take really fine sections of hair and I'm going to do a couple horizontal foils going up the nape of her neck. And then you guys will see that I move to vertical and then I go back to horizontal. So right here, you'll see just how fine the first foil is that I'm taking. I always tell people to spend the most time around the hairline because that's where it stands out the most. Now I often get questions about what brush I like to use for any of my blonding services and the brush that you guys see here is actually from Goldwell. I've been using this brush for several years now and a majority of the time if you guys see me here on YouTube, I am usually always using this brush. Um, I just really like it because I can get really into the hairline and just get really detailed with it as well. I feel like I'm not oversaturating the areas that don't need to be, um, and I'm not overlapping any of the blonde because it is so easy to get into those detailed little pieces. So if you guys are hairstylists, you know that no hairline is created equal. Some people have a widow's peak. Some people have um, peaks that go down to a V down here on the hairline. So depending on the person's head will depend on how I do the hairline. But for her particularly, you guys will see that I just kind of ping pong back and forth with the horizontal sections right here, just because her hairline down here on the neck is a little bit wider. I just wanna make sure that I am covering the entire hairline so there's no random dark chunks on the back of her head when she places her hair in a ponytail.
So one of the most common mistakes that I see with hairstylists is that they tend to rush with full foils, especially on the bottom half of the client's head. So I feel like a lot of hairstylists tend to throw in about 15 foils down here and move on to the top half and call it a full foil. I 100% stand by that the interior of the client's hair matters just as much as the exterior does. I don't mind spending two or even three hours foiling someone's hair to get that perfect white blonde because I know that my clients are paying for a quality product and they deserve that. Like I pack in these foils to make sure that my clients are getting exactly what they want whenever they ask me to get that platinum white blonde. Now, of course, if your client wants a more dimensional blonde, then you, know, you don't have to put as many foils in or you just kind of um, leave a little bit more hair in between. But as I work my way up the hair, you guys will see that I leave minimal hair in between the foils and I am doing really fine sections. So it's more of like a baby light to like a small weave. So now that I finished doing the horizontal part of her hairline, I'm moving on to the vertical. Now, some people like to just do horizontal all the way up. I personally like to do a couple vertical just because I feel like this is going to get the most blonde on her hairline. I've tried to do horizontal foils all the way up the back of the client's hair before, and I personally just felt like it wasn't as blonde on the hairline as I would have liked to be. So that's what I like to do. I mean, there's no right or wrong way to do this but that's just my personal preference so i like to do probably like two to three foils uh vertically and then i switch back to horizontally All right, now moving on to the other side of the hairline and you guys will see that I'm just repeating the same things that I did on the right side.
So switching back over to horizontal foils, I'm going to go about halfway up the back of the head and I'll show you guys why in just a minute. So I stopped about halfway up the back of her head and you guys will see I stopped right where the ear meets the foil. Now the reason I did that is because I'm going to connect the front section to the back and right now I'm going to do a couple of vertical foils on her hairline. I know some people like to do horizontal up the hairline and if that's you that is totally fine but for me I personally like to do vertical right around the face area just because I feel like I don't have any lines or any bleeding um, I just feel like it gives a really nice clean bright hairline and it just gives the nicest pop of blonde without it looking chunky or stripy or unnatural. If you guys are going to do vertical foils on the hairline, I highly recommend taking really small foils, but doing a lot of them, even if you want to do them back to back to give the brightest amount of blonde possible. Um, I personally just recommend doing smaller foils because it gives you a lot more control. It looks a lot more natural and you can get really close up to the scalp. Now that I've finished up the front of the hairline, I'm going to move up to the sides of the hairline, which is right above the ear. I feel like this part gets missed a lot, so I'm going to do horizontal sections now, and you guys will see that I connect this section to the back of her head where I was doing those horizontal foils as well. Now I like to stop midway in the back for this reason, because I feel like if you can get as much hair as possible into the foils right here on the side of her head, then it just creates less work for you in the back of the head if that makes sense. So just try and utilize the amount of space that you have on the foil to grab as much hair as possible. Now I'm going to continue doing this exact same foil pattern horizontally all the way up until I reach her mohawk section.
So on this other side of the head, I went and so on this other side of the head, I just did vertical foils all the way back to show you the difference between the two and what it would look like. It doesn't look any different when you rinse the foils out. It looks the exact same and you get the same amount of brightness. But I just wanted to show you the two different options in case you are interested on seeing vertical all the way back. So on the very front of her hairline, on the very top mohawk section, I am going to do two different foils. Now she doesn't have a widow's peak, it's just straight across but I really like to pay attention and focus on the details on this, just like I would on any other part of the hairline. But with this, I'm going to split it up into two different foils. So I'm just going to ping pong back and forth and really stack in those foils to give her the most amount of brightness here in the front. So you guys can see on this side, it goes a little bit diagonal and that is totally fine. I personally like to customize every person's hairline differently. Like I said in the beginning, no hairline is created equal. So you really just want to make sure that you're doing everything custom to your client's hairline. So now I'm just going to work on this mohawk section, making my way all the way to the back of her head. And then on the very back where I stopped earlier, I'm just going to meet it all the way to where this mohawk section ends. And then we're going to move on and do the ends of her hair that were a little bit more brassy in the beginning. And I'll show you how I do that after I finish this mohawk. So as I showed you guys in the beginning, the middle strand of her hair was actually the perfect color blonde. It was super bright, super silvery. So really what we need to brighten up is just the ends of her hair, which is why I didn't want to stick the entire strand into the foil when we were touching up her roots. It's just unnecessary. It's going to cause unnecessary damage and just over process her hair. So what I'm doing here is just kind of lightening where I feel like the platinum blonde color and the more brassy color meet and I'm just going to foil the parts where it's a little bit more brassy and needs to be popped up a little bit. I'm using a mixture between 10 volume and 20 volume with of course some Olaplex. You don't need anything higher than that because it is already pretty blonde. It's just kind of stuck at that like eight and we need it at like a 10. So we don't really need to lift it a ton. So I'm just going to foil those pieces and just make my way around her hair and just do the ends of it. So for toner today, I'm gonna to use the Redken Shade DQ 9N and 9V. Now keep in mind, because this was January of this year, this was before the 10 series were out. Now you can use a 10 series if you guys want the Platinum Blonde. My personal favorite is the 10P and 10VV mixture. But for this one particularly, before the 10 series was out, the 9V and the 9N mixture was my favorite because I felt like it kept the hair nice and blonde. Um, and bright without having to go too ashy and kind of darken it up if that makes sense So I'm going to pre-tone her hair using the Fanola free no yellow. I personally love the free no yellow um, It's my favorite purple shampoo in the world. I use it for all my platinum blonde clients, but also on myself So after the shampoo, I'm going to follow it up with the Olaplex number two Of course, I personally love to use the number two before I tone just because it does a really great job at detangling, evening out the porosity of the hair, and just giving me a nice kind of canvas to work with with the toner. And then I condition, and we go into blow drying the hair.
So this is the final result to our Icy Platinum White Blonde Transformation. Her hair color turned out so even. I absolutely love how it lifted. I have to give all the thanks to Schwarzkopf and Olaplex. I absolutely love that combo. And that Redken Shades EQ toner was also perfect for this transformation. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what else you guys want to see. And I will see you all in my next one. Bye.